Lesson three, part three, dative of means or agent and dative of time. We have seen before that a dative noun that follows a preposition is the object of that preposition. And that a dative noun standing by itself in a sentence is often the indirect object of that sentence. There are a few other things that a dative noun can do when it is standing all by itself in a sentence. First is the dative of means or agent. A dative noun with no preposition can be used to show either the means of the action or the agent of the action. Means is the tool that is used to do an action, which we're going to translate with the word with. This is going to be something that's not a person, normally an object. An agent is the person that does an action, translated with the word by. So an example of means, hoi kakoi anthropoi, the bad men were killing us with stones. Now you'll notice there's no with in this sentence. There's no preposition for that. There's no soon or you know, meta. We just have a noun in the dative. Now, it wouldn't make any sense to translate this as a direct and as an indirect object. The bad men were killing to stones us. What? The men, the bad men were killing us to stones what? That doesn't make any sense. This is the tool that they were using to do this action. This is the means that they used. I was rejoicing with joy. Joy is the tool that I was using to rejoice. A little bit of a silly sentence, but it can be a sort of non-physical tool as well, I suppose. All right, agent the men were being saved by the apostles. Now, there's a note about this a little bit later, but you'll notice it's not the apostles that were actually the ones doing the saving. They were the ones that were being used to do the saving. God was doing the saving, but it was the, the he, he used the human agents of the apostles to facilitate this action happening. Paulo edidasketa haachras. The multitude was being taught by Paul. Um, that means that they were actually being taught by someone else, but Paul was the agent that was used, so probably God was the one in focus here. We've seen before who pa with the genitive for the um, the person who's actually actually doing the action. So if it's in the dative, it's just a little bit more removed. It's like a means, but it's a person instead. So we're going to call it an agent instead of a means. But it's that idea of the tool that's being used by somebody else. To tell the difference between means and agent, just ask yourself if it's an object tool or if it's a person. If it's an object tool, it's means. If it's a person, it's agent. Dative of time. A dative noun can also be used by itself to express when an action happens. Translate this using on or occasionally at, depending on the context. So to sabato lego. I am speaking on the Sabbath. It's not that I'm speaking to the Sabbath. That doesn't make any sense. I'm speaking on the Sabbath. To chrono echano arrow. At that time, I will speak. Now, if I said on that time, it just sounds ridiculous in English, which is why I chose at instead. Egero te trite hemera. On the third day, I will rise up. That's actually a phrase that is seen quite a lot in scripture. Te trite hemera. That shows up quite a lot. Ebaptizamein te hemerai ekene. On that day, I was being baptized. Remember, the order of a Greek sentence only tells you what is important. Whatever is first is most important. So the means, agent, or time could be found anywhere in the sentence. That means that for these first two sentences here, the fact that it's on the Sabbath is the focus of the sentence. With the second one, the focus is that at that time, I will speak. Here, the focus is on, I will rise up. And then it gives additional information of when. This one here, I was being baptized is the focus of the, of the sentence. And then on that day is additional information. 
All right, some minute details. In Greek, there is a very important distinction here that doesn't come across into English. The genitive case can also be used to show agent. When the genitive is used, normally with hupa, the agent is the person that is totally responsible for the action. Without them, it could not possibly happen. When the dative case is used, the agent is the person who is only partially responsible. The action was done through them, like when God works us what works through us to do something. So when you're translating, this isn't going to be a big distinction that we're going to make, assuming you're translating into English. If you're translating into another language that has this distinction, then you would, of course, need to make this distinction. But if we're translating into English, there's no way to make this uh, really obvious. Um, and so we're just going to go ahead and translate with by, and it's not a big deal. But if you are going to teach or preach out of a passage that had one of these happening, you might want to pull that out and help people realize that that's what's going on, that this isn't the person actually doing the action. This is the person that God used to make the action happen. And that can have some really important implications when you're studying meanings of passages and things like that, especially for teaching and preaching. Summary, a dative noun can be used to show means, agent, or time of the action. Dative of means is the tool that is used to do the action, translate with the word with. Dative of agent, the person that does an action, translate with the word by. And dative of time, when the action happens, translate with the word on or at.